Uh, okay, we are live. We are live. So we'll start seeing people pouring in real quick. What up, what up, what up? Uh, okay. So first, we are going to uh, say this is the... What were we calling it? The Urban Community something podcast? <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we good. Okay. So, um, disclaimer: these are not the opinions of Rapzilla or anyone that works at Rapzilla. None of us work for Rapzilla, obviously, um, or else you would know that. Um, but yeah, we are here to talk about what is relevant and what is being talked about in the culture right now. So, Facts. let's do it. Oh, yes, we sir. got people pouring in. Uh, okay, so <coughs> first topic of the night is the Oscars. Do I get to say who to I am? To start it on a light note. <laughs> Wait, what was that? I said, do I get to say who I am? Oh, yeah, we should introduce ourselves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We'll do a quick intro. Um, I am Poetics Wande over there. Um, everybody knows her. She was here last week. Everyone knows Josh. She was here last week. Um, so, Risha, tell us who you are. I am Risha Leandra. I'm a digital marketing and branding strategist. Um, so I help artists um, create marketing campaigns um, and create their brand identity to know who they are, what their message is, and connect uh with the right people so and how yep, can people I'm connect doing. with you on the internet oh they can follow me it's at risha leandra everywhere um r-i-s-h-a-l-e-o-n-d-r-a um everywhere so that dope. dope 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 and what are your guys places people can find you um you can find me online at omg it's one day that's omg i-t-s w-a-n-d-e What's up? And you can follow me on all social medias at Zar Josh Music, C Z A R J O S H M U S I C. And I am at P R O D B Y Poetics. And we gonna hop into this. Um, so I don't know how much you guys are into movies and stuff, but um, <laughs> Black Panther is the first superhero movie to win an Oscar. Oh man. <laughs> Which is pretty dope. Um, dope. (laughs) See, so like I have the pretty like not popular take on Black Panther winning the Oh snap. (laughs) But I mean we don't have to get into it, but personally, like Black Panther wasn't you know as good as people hyped it up in my opinion. You know, like the cultural like aspect, like sure, but like concerning the actual film there have been movies from Marvel that have been a lot better than Black Panther. I, I was mean, actually going to say the same thing. Exactly, because you know it's true, right? <laughs> I mean, no, those, those I, was, I was like... Movie, man. <laughs> bro, I thought um, a few of the other ones in the past, so I was like, how did... When I first saw that, I was like, wait, there's been none so far that have won an Oscar? Exactly. That That's crazy. <laughs> That's for the first Captain First America. Avengers. Exactly. Bro. Oh, no, like, no, that movie's trash. What? <laughs> first uh, Captain America was was garbage. <laughs> like those Joker Whoa. movies. That, those were like serious acting in like the Joker movies and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, true. that's DC, though. That, that's mm. also true. Yeah. Um, Chad Horton said, bro, Josh. Bro, boo. Oh, boo, Josh. <laughs> I thought you were saying, bro. <laughs> Yo, Black Panther was not as good as people. It was a it great movie. Me. I have nothing negative to say. I think it was great. It was hilarious. It was, really good. It was good. Comp- I like, think they're all fantastic. I, I think they're all <laughs> fantastic. Them. But it is surprising that it's the first one out of all the Marvel movies. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Hit that, hit that I awesome. thought um, Infinity War deserved one easy. Exactly. Because, yo. That was a good movie. Well, did it come I mean, out after the one? Because, like, could it be nominated for next year? No, because it was not. Oh, I got no idea. 
Oh. It was nominated uh, in one category for, I think it was visual or something. I, I forget, but oh yeah, it was nominated for something. Yeah, because uh, Spider Verse was nominated too, and uh, that came out pretty late as well. So, I mean, Black, it was a good movie. It had like a lot of quality themes to teach you life lessons. <laughs> you know, true, true. true. This is true. true. Great stuff. <laughs> Oh no! I had um, <laughs> Nathaniel Shelton just said, talk about hot take poetics. You want a hot take? Uh, Winter Soldier was a trash movie. That's a hot take. Uh, that one was not trash. That one was good. I think so. Oh. Oh, nah, that it's one trash. Was good. <laughs> oh man, no, you were right though with the first one. The first Captain America. But... Well, Captain America: Civil War should have won something because that was nuts. Yeah. That movie was fantastic. It really was, man. Because like that movie had Black Panther in it with a Captain America fighting Iron Man. It was um, all over the place. Wow. Yeah, it was, yeah, wild. It was wild. It was wild. But <laughs> I'm trying to read all these comments. Oh, all the comments are coming. Uh, what else? Travis James said Winter Soldier was decent. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so yeah, which, it was all right. Which one, is, which one is y'all's favorite, though? That's a good question. Hmm. Well, as far as Marvel movies, Infinity. mine would have to be Spider Verse because that joint was fire. Interesting. Plus, there's a Black Spider Man too. That joint was fire. <laughs> <laughs> so we're stepping okay. out of like the Marvel, like the MCU, and into right. Tobey Maguire's second Spider-Man movie. Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh Spider-Man 2? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Spider-Man 2. That that deserved the Oscar. The third one was trash, but... No, oh, yeah, with the dancing? <laughs> yeah, I'm not... I'm not <laughs> when Tobey was Spider-Man. I, I don't like... I didn't like Tobey being, being Spider-Man. Oh, he was better than Garfield. Yeah, Garfield was better than Tobey. Yeah, Tobey was better than Garfield. Yeah, he was better than Garfield, though. That's true. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. He was so cool. <laughs> I forgot about him. Mm-hmm. Everyone just has to forget that Jamie Foxx did that one um, where he played a villain in that Spider-Man movie. Yeah, see him. Uh, yeah, see, everyone just forgets about that. Uh, okay. Um, so now that we are done with that, we are going to jump over to someone's going to have to tell me how to pronounce this guy's name. Um, Jesse Smollett. Jesse, oh. Jesse oh, Smollett. Man. Jesse okay, here we go. So, um, he is oh, an man. actor famous for being on Empire and uh, the movie Alien Covenant and taking over news right now. Um, or else we wouldn't even be talking about it. Uh, January 22nd, he received a threatening letter in the mail, threatening his life and saying MAGA on it. And January 29th, he says he was jumped by two white men who yelled racist, homophobic slurs. He said they put a noose around his neck and poured liquids on him. Um, He spoke out saying he believed it was because he was critical of the Trump administration. Uh, Trump even referenced the attack when asked, saying, I think that it's horrible. It doesn't get worse than that. February 13th. Chicago police stormed the homes of who they believed were the attackers. Both of them were Nigerian descent brothers and were extras on the TV show Empire. Um, So February 20th, Smollett was charged with a class four felony of filing a false police report. And later in the day on the 21st, they announced that details of how it was staged. And in a public statement, the two brothers um, said that they helped stage the attack and that he had the idea himself after the letter that he sent didn't get him the attention that he wanted. So what do you guys think about this? I just think it's ridiculous. It's, clout is a disease. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't it's... know. I think he played himself. Like, I think he, I think he forgot that jail exists. I think maybe he was so famous he forgot that, oh, if you do something stupid like this, you can get sent to prison. And... Your life is over. Yikes. Right. I, I <laughs> thousand percent agree. Like, there's no way that this was well thought out 
um I don't yeah I, just, I think like, you forgot about the internet like <laughs> yeah. we can trace you <laughs> yeah and it was like people were on his side for like probably like five minutes and then it's like stuff just started coming out and mm-hmm. you know after that it was just like okay you know of course we want to especially you know a black brother like you know you're looking like okay he went through this Let's band together. And then it's like, as details started coming out, it's just like, this doesn't make any sense. Nah. So I'm confused. Like, what did he think mm-hmm. was going to happen? Did he think... Well, I, I guess was his original plan to, like, say he got beat up and not file charges? Because, like, I don't know why he went to the police. Well, then he went to the hospital because he really did get beat up. But I don't know. He, it's he crazy. Didn't himself. Like, so... they got them on tape buying the, the supplies. Like, it's really, it's really bad. <laughs> Yeah. They have text messages from his phone of him telling them what to do, the payment receipts, like the internet just played him. Yeah, and in this twenty nineteen world, like you just you can't go anywhere without anybody watching. Yeah. Like they even exactly had the Ubers of the guys Ubering to his house at that time. Like See, that's wild. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Um Nathaniel Shelton said just because he wasn't getting paid enough, question mark, question mark. Yeah, they oh, said yeah. he wanted to um, or something like that. So he tried That's to get really attention. Actually. I don't think it was That's worth crazy. it. I'm pretty sure he was doing pretty fine. Financially. Travis James said the FBI has since said he didn't send the letter to himself and he didn't pay the brothers to attack. Um, I don't know how accurate that is. I Googled it like two hours ago and that's what I found. But <laughs> I think, is he pleading um, not guilty? I don't know. Yeah, I should say. Uh, yeah. Did he plead not guilty? I don't think he's pled yet. Yeah, like he just posted posted bail. He's arrested, he? like yeah. Oh yeah, it was a bail of a hundred thousand. Yeah, it was I think he, I think he po- did he post it or was that a different case? I, I feel like he the I other he, man. He, oh yeah, uh, the other, the <laughs> other. Man. Oh, that's 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 a, that's a further topic. Speaking of <laughs> Chicago Police Department, they've been busy, boy. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, dang, um, they fed up. They said, no, we're going to clean up our city. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Black History um, Month canceled. <laughs> uh, so do you think it was primarily him trying to get paid more or was it for basically publicity clout Bro, trying I, to get people on the side? I honestly have no clue. Like this whole I, story just, is bizarre. It doesn't make any sense. I think it it's doesn't. also like that shows like negative self image. Because honestly, like, if you look at it, even whenever they question people, like, man, how do you feel about this? Like, people who knew him, people are like, man, I really liked him. I marched with him, you know? He's a cool person. I had a lot Mm -hmm. of respect for him, so I don't understand why he did this. And so it was kind of like he really had no reason to do it. He wasn't not liked. Mm -hmm. He wasn't, like, seen as a loser. So, like, he basically is just wasting his time. Like, yeah, like crying wolf. Yeah. And I think, too, he, like, like we said earlier, that he didn't see the conse- full-on consequences. Um, but also, too, I think, you know, maybe it has something to do with being one of... I mean, he does come from a family of people that are, I guess, fairly known. Um, maybe not, like, super famous, but his sister is an actress. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, his sister's husband, he's in music and, and doing things. But it's like maybe he was looking for something else just to jump out and stand out from the rest or... I don't, I don't know. It just seems like, you know, after, like, if you, he, it just didn't seem like he thought through everything. And I'm, so I'm wondering I'm just, if like, he has friends. This is where accountability comes into play. Like, yeah. did he tell someone who said, oh, yeah, that's a good idea? <laughs> or did yeah. he keep this to himself? <laughs> friends are yes men. Or just not telling people at all. You know what I mean? That's wild. Yeah, because I think if he had friends, they would have been like, Dude, nah, bro. Do this. Yeah. <laughs> like, keep your... then he went on talk shows. Like, oh, he played himself. This man went on Good Morning America. I think if he didn't do all of that, maybe the police would have left him alone. Yeah, but because maybe. of the fact that he went to Good Morning America and all this other stuff, and he's like, oh, no, it's real. Then they were like, okay, look, we're going to shut this down and make you an example. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. Right. right. So I think that goes back to the clock thing. But yeah. Yeah. Clout is um, so, uh, follow up. Do you believe this will end his career forever, or um, are we in a place in America where you think that if he took time off, 
he could come back in a few years or even probably weeks and end up being successful again. Um, and then also to talk about it more, uh, people thought six, nine wouldn't be famous after, um, there were sex allegations for him. Uh, people believed Kodak black would be gone after his allegations. So basically could he still make a comeback in the public's eye? It's interesting because I feel like even though those crimes from those other two artists were like insane, I feel like America has a mm-hmm. history of overlooking those type of crimes. That's true. Ironically. Mm-hmm. But with this, mm-hmm. I feel like people are unforgiving whenever they give you their sympathy. So I don't know. This is like touches a different area of people's like, because people are like, man, I really cared. And like, I actually spoke out to defend you and then you lied. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think it'll it'll be a long time if he does get to come back. But also just dealing with the weight of how it was like a race crime. Um, like you're gonna have to gain the want of the whole black community. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to play, mm-hmm. gain the want of the whole um, you know LGBT community. Um, yeah, like can you can you and you know like both of them are quick to cancel people, so it's hard just mm. to be like. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to welcome you back. Like, uh, yeah. Kevin Hart can come back and he apologized like a hundred times for what he did. So, what makes this different for. Yeah. 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 And I think it's kind of seen as like an embarrassment, too. Like, even like people who want to hire him, like, it's kind of like, mm, that's very I true. Want, I don't want your name associated with what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. Liability. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. He's gonna have to kill it with the roles that he gets from now on. He's just gonna have to like do really, really great (laughs) with it (laughs) because get get a few, get a few artsy movies. Yeah, all he had was really Empire. Honestly, that's very true. So he's gonna have to like he just kills Alien Covenant. Anything could have been coming his way. He doesn't even know. Like anything could have been coming his way. (laughs) Now it's like that's definitely done. Yeah, what's done in the dark will come to the light. That's very true. Uh, okay, so hopping over to the next topic, pretty similar, but different in the same way. Um, oh boy, R. Kelly, the man, <laughs> the man that didn't have a plan. Um, so, R. Kelly turned himself into Chicago police um, only after hours after being indicted on ten counts of aggravated criminal sexual assault. His attorney, Steve Greenberg, stated, I think he is innocent. I think all the women are lying. Um, R. Kelly's been accused of these allegations. That's an exact quote, too. Yeah, it's uh, insane. Some of them, all these um, allegations, some of them spanning over two decades. Um, so justice is happening, but will his music ever disappear? Like, will we ever be able to kind of erase... Nah. what he's doing basically I or has his music became to a point brain, where it's so synonymous um, <laughs> I think his reign of superior, superiority I, I can't even say the word but I think his reign has deceased kind of like Bill Cosby like the, the Bill Cosby era was over so like now I think people are like oh yeah he can go to jail now like he's not making he's not putting out any new hits and so Ooh. I think people are really going to come for him and try to get him mm. sent to prison. But I think because his songs, as annoying as it is, are so amazing. Yeah, they're great. It's hard. It's like you can't eliminate them. So I think people are going to have to make... Like, I made a decision where I'm like, okay, I'm not going to listen to this. Like, If I catch yeah. myself singing mm-hmm. it, I'm like, oh, I have to stop. But like, I yeah. think they're so, they're so like iconic songs that match so many yeah. situations that like you can't just not remember them. Yeah, and so so let's say like a new movie comes out uh, next month that has I believe I can fly on it. Like you upset about that, or is nope. it just like it's, it's one of those cringing moments where it's like, <laughs> it's uh, like this is awkward. Um, yeah. <laughs> do I walk out the theater or do I just sit here? You know yeah, what I, mean? <laughs> I think probably a lot of people aren't even going to pick him anymore. Like licensors, I think they're going to try to stay away. Hopefully. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Probably I mean, choose. Look, I mean, it's been a long time since he's been pretty relevant, like outside of this stuff. So it's just like, yeah, the music. Like, there's a lot of 
people that are you know younger than us that didn't know what his music was so of course his numbers went up because they were like streaming like who is this and um you know i think because it's older um it has the possibility of fading away but i mean we know so many people that did crazy stuff like years ago and their music is still still relevant yeah um still popping so I, i don't think it will I don't think his music will shut down. Nobody's taking his music off his streaming. It's still going to be there. Yeah. There's still going to be uh-huh. checks sent. So I, I don't think it's not going to be something where, I mean, there, there'll be a dip, definitely. But I mm-hmm. definitely think people will still listen. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, shout out to the Boondocks because that show mm-hmm. is mad prophetic, bro. Like his lawyer sounds exactly <laughs> like the lawyer from the Boondocks episode. And it's just insane <laughs> how many parallels are there from the episode in real life. So yeah. shout out to Aaron Magruder and the Boondocks. Uh, but <laughs> glad he's going to jail, though, because he definitely needs to be there. Hopefully. I think they um, said he didn't post bail either. Yes, he did. Oh, he, yeah, he did. Oh, it was recently? Yeah. yeah he posted like it today. An hour ago or something like that. Yeah. Mm. It was, it was nice. That's wild. Yeah, it is. Hopefully justice can be served because he's Amen. been out for too long. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I definitely too, gotten but, away with stuff for too long. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and they said last time he was so close to getting caught, but the police had like entered someone house, someone's house without getting the warrant, so they didn't have like probable cause to search that house to get the tape that they got. Oh, so wow. then it had the the evidence had to be thrown hmm. out, and Dang. they were just like, "Bro, what the f?" <laughs> like, yeah. Well, can we talk about the cultural aspects? concerning this whole ordeal because mm-hmm. I, there's like something that goes like way like deeper when it comes to R. Kelly in terms of like the black community mm-hmm. and how we handle sexual abuse. So can we talk about that for a little bit? Well, one thing that's interesting, an interesting discussion is a lot of people say that because his victims were black women is why he's been able to get along with it, uh, get mm-hmm. away with it for such mm-hmm. a long time. Because mm-hmm. even like um, one thing I found out was like Atlanta. So I'm in Atlanta, right? It's mm-hmm. like one of the most highest, um, it's one of the cities, highest ranked cities for sex trafficking. Right. And they say mm-hmm. like the reason why nobody even knows what's going on as well, is because a lot of the girls who they used are African-American women. And then whenever they get kidnapped, they uh-huh. don't put it on the news or, or anything. And so a lot of people even say like with the R. Kelly situation, that if the girls he chose were a different race, that it probably would have he would have been in jail a long 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 time ago exactly but he like they say like he intentionally chooses women who are in situations that like are in danger or maybe in or in poverty so basically they he picks girls who if they if someone wants to speak up basically they'll make an excuse to be like oh well this girl like you know she didn't have that much ambition she wasn't going to do a lot with her life she probably just wanted r kelly to help her she wanted this to happen to her and so I think that's like a problematic thing mm-hmm. with what's going on. That's terrible. Yeah, I think it's pretty horrible. I think also too, you know, looking at the the state that this country is in, I think it is one of those things where it is a wake up call mm-hmm. um, to not just like, mm-hmm. hey, you know, this can't go under the radar anymore. Right. Um, so I definitely think like, yes, to Josh, what you're saying, like it is a moment of time where we can switch that narrative. Instead of just being so caught up on R. Kelly and this is what he did. And yes, it's horrible. And yes, like all the victims, like I just pray for each and every one of them. But also, too, like it is a time to open up the door to speak um, to those that are um, going through the situation right now that are, you know, black, white, whatever color they are. Like Mm -hmm. anybody going through the situation right now, it's like, you know, now is the time to talk. Um, yeah, I feel like it, it, and it can go across the board just as far as, you know, um, women that have been silenced for so long, even, I mean, you can look at that, even with the Harry Weinstein case, like That's true. these people were rich and, you know, doing their own thing, but you know, it, the, the problem still persisted as like, you know, there's still women being silenced. So yes, I do think it is a, a huge problem in the black community, but I think it's a overall like huge problem in the world. Um, of where it's one of those things that it's just like, hush, hush, we don't talk about it and we'll move forward. And I mean, you know, I've heard from friends that have, you know, gone through situations that are horrible 
Um, but like like we said, it's hush hush, be quiet. Like we don't want to talk about it until like 20 years later. And then it's like, oh, well, this happened to me a long time ago. And it's, you know, that mm-hmm. door should be open. And I mean, we could go down a whole rabbit trail with that. But yeah. um, I definitely think um, it is a problem in the black community, but it's a problem in just every community. Because I'm sure there's, you know, of course, yeah. the media or the police or whoever, they may not have taken it uh, as as serious as they should have. But I mean, that's not just, mm-hmm. I know it's not just an American problem. There's women in India that can't even speak up on anything. So, right. you know, it's not just, it's definitely not just an American problem. So um, I think also too, lastly, like just as Christians, like we have to look at this situation as like, you know, what are we doing to make sure that people are, have an open voice um, and can like, you know, when it comes to in our household or um, our friends or whoever, like, that they should have an open place that they can speak and feel confident about. Um, if they're going through something, like we should be that open door for them. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm. Beautifully worded. Yes. <laughs> oh no, that's great. Yeah. Very well put. Yeah. Um, so um, kind of expanding on the topic, um, do you think it's wrong when people are finding ways to still enjoy the music? Um, Cause I've seen people online saying stuff like um, they're like, yeah, it's terrible what he did, but this is still a great song and I'm still going to enjoy it and stuff. Or do you have trouble like um, separating it in your head? Cause I think it's, I think it's very different for different people. Exactly. Yeah. I think, oh. though, being in music, though, um, just knowing that, like, every time you're streaming it, you're putting money in his pocket, I think mm. it changes the way I approach it because it's like you're you're enabling him. Like, he can post bail because you're streaming his songs, like, type stuff. Like, mm. and so it's kind of like, I don't know. So whenever you realize... I don't know, one of the negative things was streaming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So unless you, you download his song and then so he can never get paid every time you stream it. I don't know. But, like, <laughs> yeah, I think it's one of those weird things where it's kind of like... I don't know. It's like, it's weird. So it's kind of like one of those things you have to make a decision. Like, are you someone who's going to separate those two things or are you going to be someone who views them as the same and, like... I don't know. I think it's kind of hard to separate the art from the person because a lot of times artists are speaking about things they're actually going through. Exactly. So it's, mm-hmm. Their music is, they're being very serious. That's very true. Yeah. Well, for me, um, that whole thing would just have to like deal with your own personal discretion and like what you're convicted by because when you think of like musicians, like there have been musicians that have done terrible things in the past as well. There's rappers that have like killed people. You know what I mean? There's there's folks that mm-hmm. that use drugs and that do all sorts of crazy stuff, live all sorts of crazy lives. So you really just have to pick and choose like what you're willing to tolerate in musicians' personal yeah. lives, and then kind of go from there. Because like, when you think of R. Kelly, he isn't. Uh, he's a pretty terrible person. There have been worse musicians than him that have also dropped mm-hmm. like great music. You know what I mean? Uh, so it just depends on like what you can co- uh, condone and like how good the music is. I guess mm-hmm. if that makes sense. So mm-hmm. me personally, I don't have to hear another R. Kelly song for the rest of my life. Like, Sex. I can <laughs> like. Just box it up and throw it out. Um, it's not that important to me. There's more things going on in the world. And right. yeah, there are memories and things yeah. along with that. But it is what it is. We'll move forward. And then, I, like, to Josh's point, like, that does even get me to look at, like, what other music am I listening to that's not necessarily of good quality or good good stature, I guess. You know, people of good stature. There's mm-hmm. a lot of that. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, if we're, if we're throwing out R. Kelly, who else do we need to be throwing out? Um, it's a, it's definitely mm. a heart check. Yeah. That's kind of similar to what um, D1 said several weeks back. True, yeah. He said it's kind of the same thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of point to like the same point that like when you kind of cast a stone at somebody, so to speak, 
then you kind of have to think about the whole total depravity thing and how we're all kind yeah. of, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it gets tricky because it's like, okay, like, yeah, we don't like our Kelly, but you know what I mean? There's plenty of terrible people out there that make good music. And it just kind of, so it all just has to deal with like personal conviction for me personally. But yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but God bless. I Tommy definitely get you. Makes great music. <laughs> That's the crazy part. Hey, hey, I pray for his soul. But yeah. facts, <laughs> most definitely. Um, so kind of speaking on a similar thing. Ooh, um, we got heavy topics today. <laughs> no, it's similar but different at the same time. Um, so let's say, um, separating it, but it, it's not at all the same, but similar in concept. <laughs> But um, so let's say someone makes like Christian or worship music and then they end up leaving faith or leaving the community. Mm -hmm. Shall we still be enjoying their music in the same way Hmm. or shall we like separate Mm -hmm. that? That's interesting because in that context, I would say, yeah, I'm going to still listen to the song. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, like say if all the Hillsong members said, oh, we're not Christians anymore. It's like. Okay, we're still that'd be crazy for all of them to do that. <laughs> Just like, nah, bro, we ain't, we ain't rocking with this no more. All like fifteen of them decide at the same time. <laughs> that's wild. I mean, well, that's true. Like, his song is still fire. His song is still, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. Still a yeah. song. It's like what we gonna sing during service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just we got rid of every song we'll that we can we'll sing. Find we'll find cr- old school we'll, hymns. Just get more. Just get more Chris Tomlin. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, so, Tom- oh man. I I definitely think <laughs> I think worship Christian music is a different light because it's like there are so many songs that I've heard that I don't know. I don't know who wrote it. I barely even know who. I mean, I know Hillsong and I know you know I know the top people, but. Like there's so many songs that we sing in church, we don't know who wrote it. Like we no clue, but we still sing that. So yeah. We still sing that song because it's not to, about that person or from necessarily that person's like. Um, it's a it's a common experience that we you know are going to worship our Savior in. So right. Um, and I mean, mm-hmm. we take a look at Psalms. Who wrote that? David. Like, and David was a hot mess. Yeah, he was, <laughs> for, he's wild for, yeah. for, for some period of time. So I think if we can you know, uh, take those songs, sing those, if we can, you know, I think we can do the same with um, other, I mean, Gunger, that's a band that's gone through from, they had a big hit, um, those few big hits, Mm -hmm. and like now, I don't think either one of, uh, I don't know what their status is now, but I know that they've left the faith that previously before, Mm -hmm. Um, but Beautiful Things is still my jam, and it makes me think of the Lord, I'm not thinking about, I'm not thinking about them, I am praying for them, you know, hopefully they come back, but, Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, it's, you know, I'm talking to the so Lord. So now it's like, do you apply that same rule to R. Kelly? Like, no, because his music is not talking about, it's not talking <laughs> yeah. about Jesus. Oh, no, no, no. Well, he did have some Christian talking, songs. Talking about some other stuff. No. The, yeah, mm. he had um, he Apparently, had that You yeah. Saved Me song. Exactly, mm. yeah. You Saved Me. Yeah, no, that, no. No, we will People be boxing say, I believe like I can fly at church function. <laughs> That's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ooh, fun stuff mm. okay so uh, last week we had a lot of people oh, ask about CHH <laughs> sexism oh <laughs> so where, where, um, are ding, 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 ding. where are the light wait what <laughs> I said, where, where are the, the what? Topics? Oh, light. The light topics. No, you came. You came. You came out a bad week. <laughs> um, so podcast. a lot of people were asking. Um, a lot of people were asking about, um, because we had one day on last weekend. A lot of people were commenting on Facebook saying they wanted to see her talk about, uh, CAJ sexism and people. So I was like, you know what? Next week we got two girls in here. Let's ask both of them, basically. Um, so how have you seen, uh, CHH sexism in the community on like a grand scale or even on like a small scale with tiny little things? Who wants to go first, Risha? <laughs> Don't look at me. I, I will, I will mm-hmm. respond to things. 
I mean, you can respond. I don't know who wants to go first. But... <laughs> um, um, let's let one of the men go first. Yeah, yeah. Y'all can go first, and then we'll go. Um, I asked the question, so Josh, you go first. Uh, <laughs> well, I honestly don't feel like I am qualified to speak on this subject, but I feel like personally that we can show more respect to our female artists within the culture. Um, like concerning uh, like just showing love and like sharing music and like the small stuff, we can do more of that just to support um, the female artists. Uh, but I personally just haven't been here long enough to really say anything. Mm-hmm. So I'm just here to learn and to just see how I can help and be an ally. So I see Charles mm. said he'll, he'll go first, but I'll 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 come in. I'll step in. Mm. Um, I think <laughs> it's one of those things where um, one a lot of things is is like there's a lot of women, especially in the background of uh, Christian hip hop, that are doing a lot. Um, okay, and mm-hmm. um, you know, so it's not just artists. It's like you know, we, uh, you know, we we have ran some things in the back, a lot of things in the background. Um, okay. And I think, you know, it's definitely good that, you know, we're there. Um, but I think, you know, also too, as artists or as just a woman in general in this field, um, there's a lot of times where men are afraid to, um, or uh, just don't necessarily give um, credit where credit is due. I necessarily haven't experienced mm-hmm. that, so I won't say for myself, but I have heard from others. Um, but this also, too, like, ran into a situation last week where, not me personally, but um, just seeing, like, um, someone was, you know, a, automatically assumed that it was a guy when they were responding to somebody else about their music. And it's like, there's other, um, it's not just men responding mm-hmm. about your music. Like, there mm-hmm. are women that are out here talking about it. Um, I think that there's a lot of things where women are not necessarily, you know, put to the forefront about um, as far as like um, when it comes to, um, let's say, putting a female on a show. Um, I know that's used a lot, but Mm -hmm. it's very true. Like most of the times the female is the one like at the front and it's the opener of the opener. And then it's just like, all right, now we go into the male and, you know, let that be that, (laughs) Um, you know, I. I don't know. I haven't seen a show where the female is like the last act. Um, and when we get there, praise mm-hmm. God. Um, and I'm just right. saying, you know, it's, it may not be, um, it may not be one of those things where it's like you notice it, but I also think too, it's just one of those things where you have to take notice where if a woman is present or isn't present, like what are you doing for women? It's just the same. Like when it comes to, um, you know, if you're in this field and you're not, especially in hip hop and you're not accustomed to black culture, it's going to be hard for you to move forward in this. So Mm -hmm. you may have to educate yourself on some things and that's okay because there's going to be more women in this space. But um, yeah, that's just to start us off. I, I definitely don't, I definitely um, feel like there have been some times where women have been shut down or trampled over um, just because of men and, um, that may be their initial, um, that may be their initial, I guess, mindset because, and you know, they haven't taken the time to learn, but mm. I think now is definitely the time to learn. Just like with these other cases that we talked about mm-hmm. earlier, like mm-hmm. now is the time and there's really no excuse. So, um, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's existence in the terms of like inclusion. So I feel like, even like at my job, I know like we've been doing a better job, but uh, I feel like um, like a lot of guys, like for instance, with songs, like I think it's like a lot of indirect things that then lead to lack of inclusion. So like guys would be like, oh, wait, I'm not I'm not sexist or whatever. I just only do songs with my friends. But then whenever you look at their friend groups, it's kind of like, oh, well, I, I'm not friends with girls because I like or because they might be like, oh, I have a girlfriend, so I can't be friends with girls. Or like, oh, you know, I just I just always want to put on for my bros I, or like, yeah, I just always put on for my bros all the time. And so whenever you have like this bro culture and there's no girls in your circle mm-hmm. of friends and then you only put your friends on your songs, like it basically indirectly excludes women from ever being in this inner circle 
mm-hmm. of people mm-hmm. who are putting out music. And then when if you look at the people who are, I guess are at the top of our genre, if the people at the top of our genre are all men and then they don't have any women friends and they're only putting their friends on their songs, then basically it's going to be a continuous cycle That's That's of good. never having mm-hmm. a woman mm-hmm. on any of these songs or being put mm-hmm. on for a That's crazy. And Weird. so... And I think <clears throat> people don't even realize it's intentional. They're like, they're like, oh yeah, I'm just, I just always tell all my friends. I'm not trying to not help out a woman. But then if you look at that cycle, it's like, how is that even possible for a woman to enter? And so, uh, I think that's one thing mm-hmm. I noticed. But I mean, I'm trying to make things better slightly. And um, yeah. yeah, I think also, yeah, the show example too, because I think it's it's kind of funny too, because even like how I just did the show with Dill, like. Like he, it dawned on him one day, and he's like, "Oh wait, I like never include women in what I do." And then so then he texted me, he's like, <laughs> "Oh wait, I want to be better and include women. Do you want to join?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll like open for you or whatever." But it's I think it's interesting because like you just never a lot of guys who go on tour and actually have like the opportunities to do tours. A lot of times they don't invite women out to like do those opportunities. So luckily I've had opportunities to do a couple times, but like. I feel like for the most part, like major tours and stuff like that, like they usually aren't bringing women out. So that's like a, a recent advancement where they finally started opening the door to that. And so mm-hmm. even at the show I just did like last week, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of them were like, oh, snap. Like I never see women at shows. This is so cool seeing a woman perform. Like I'm so happy I saw this. Right. And so it's kind of funny because it's like, this could be normalized if y'all just make it normal. And yeah. so, um, yeah. Yeah, I would say, like, that's... I would just say, like, those are the main ways it exists. I think it's like, oh, where should, where should go? Oh. She's, she's, I'm throwing her back in. I think she just okay. switched her computer. Did okay. you just switch, like, platforms? No. Uh-uh. Am I back? Yeah, you're back now. No. That was weird. Like, it, like, completely, like, the app just closed out. But anyways, oh. keep going. <laughs> but, yeah, I would just say that's, like, the main way it exists, the inclusionary thing, because... Yeah, just for me observing things, like, I've noticed, like, if I didn't move to Atlanta, I feel like I wouldn't have been included in a lot of situations. But because mm. I live in Atlanta, mm. and with my job, I have to see these people every day type stuff. It's like, right. you can't see me every day. And, like, basically, then indirectly not include me in certain situations. Because mm. then after a while, mm-hmm. you kind of run out of excuses. As a, and then I think that's been really interesting because then like it's been able to help challenge people and be like, oh yeah, you know I probably should do better, at including women in what I'm doing and stuff. And so, it's been interesting like having cool conversations with people. True. We also got a comment from Luke Rodman, and she killed her performance to No Cap. Hey. <laughs> that's what's up. That's cool. That's dope. Um. So. Speaking on kind of the same topic, um, a lot of people say, I've heard people say when they're talking about um, like women in the Christian hip hop ministries, they say like, I don't uh, want to work with these people. Well, that sounds weird to say it like that, but they're like, I don't want to go on a tour. Like I would feel weird going on a tour with a girl in the same van or something like that. So what do you think that says about like, the people saying that i have an answer to that so to me that just is limiting god and what he can do Mm -hmm. so like Mm. a lot of people say that because it's like oh we don't have the money or we can't you know okay but we serve the god of the universe so he can provide the money to provide like if you don't want to ride in the same car just like okay Mm -hmm. he can provide the money for another car Uh, definitely hotel room you know have a separate hotel room i just think you know you go into it having barriers and being wise about things like right the lord's gonna provide mm. that because he sees you being obedient so mm-hmm. i think it's just you know we have to cut out the excuses and find a way to make it happen um and you know mm. or i mean heck me i'll start my own tour and, and, and me and all the women will start going on it uh it's <laughs> that's what's up things. Where it's like, you know, we, it's, it's, it's just time to me, it's just a bunch of excuses. I've seen women on shows. Um, I've seen women tour. Um, it's possible to, you know, if, ride in the same car. Um, but if you don't, if you, if you feel convicted about that, then, you know, the Lord will make space for that and make yes. an ability mm. for it to happen. Because there's women out here that need women like Wanda, uh, that need um, all these women. Yeah. 
you know, within CHH. Right. Uh, and so, you know, you're limiting the whole crowd um, when you're not bringing women on board with you. Like, there's women that are out here that are dope. Um, and, you know, they need mm-hmm. to be a part. And I think you're just silencing that voice. Um, because there's a lot of girls out there, too, that, like, I, I love hip hop. I love it. And I love, you know, seeing other women being able to do that. But you're really squandering, like, the voice of women when you're not including them on these tours. Um, I, I feel like I could be, you know, minister too well um, from another woman. Um, mm-hmm. And I think, you know, seeing uh, people like one day do their thing, like, it's really good. So why not include them mm-hmm. and find space for that? True. Dope, dope. Um, we got a comment from Chav G. Um, he says, CHH is the worst of both of its worlds. Hip hop and the church have major issues with women being up front and center on platforms. That's, that's very true. Um, definitely, definitely a take that I could see. Yeah. <laughs> it's because of just how misogynistic historically both have been mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. very true and it's just a matter of how we continue to interpret scripture because like when you think about scripture it is pretty progressive when it comes to like these type of topics and you know, the freedom that we should have that we don't give ourselves because of our own personal insecurities and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, <laughs> that kind of leads me to, like, my question is just, like, what are some practical ways that, like, male rappers or, like, male people within the CHH sphere can help promote uh, females in our culture and our yeah, I would say mm-hmm. like one, including them on your projects. So asking them to do features mm-hmm. and don't okay. put them on the trash songs, put them on the good songs. Okay. Uh, I would say um, <laughs> like, right. Including she like specified that, 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 that had a little <laughs> bit of like, like the good were, ones. Because no, I like it wasn't until recently that people actually asked me to do quality songs. Like, because people before would be like, oh yeah, mm. you, I just need a girl to sing, sing a hook. Really? Just sing on this one. And I'm like, this song sounds trash. Like, no. And so, but then, like, they'll call their friends to, like, do the, the lit songs. And it's like, no, put me on the lit song. Like, yeah. And so, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, then I would say, like, also, yeah, when you're doing a show, if, if I'm in your city that you're doing the show, hit somebody up and be like, hey, man, do something. Even if it's a couple minutes, like, hey, man, pull up, do something, Facts. do show. So, yeah. 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 And I think, you know, too, like, I mean, there's plenty of women in the background. I can tell you that. But I know. Um, Mm -hmm. coming from it so um, yeah I just think you know seek out those that are um, that are not just in the forefront too like you know I do marketing and branding there's plenty of other women that are are doing some great things in this field Um, man there's some women that are killing it in the art game in this field Um, so hire them like hire them um, have them at your shows um, and yeah, I just think, you know, treat us just like you would any other artist or any other yeah. person. It's like, once right. you start mm-hmm. really trying to think about it and be difficult, that's when it gets weird. Just like, oh, you're dope. Okay, cool. I want to work with you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Right. Dope, dope, dope. Um, so next topic is more on a marketing standpoint. Since we have the, the always amazing Risha with us. Um, so basically, uh, we're seeing a lot of people um, starting a lot of common things in hip hop that are um, slowly but surely coming into CHH uh, from face tattoos to people singing about depression and negativity and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so why do you think, um, listeners of, um, hip hop in general tend to be drawn to things like face tattoos, drug addiction? Um, I put, I put Wylan on the gram, um, controversy, depression, et cetera. And, um, uh, why are these artists being marketed so much? Hmm. 
in that's, hip hop? That's a tricky question. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's a hard question, bro. <laughs> um, <laughs> like hip hop is always like covered like a taboo, mm-hmm. and like the stuff that people don't want to talk about. So, like, when you think about hip-hop in the 70s, it started out talking about, like, poverty and, like, you know, the crack epidemic going into the 80s and, you know, like, stuff that people just don't really want to shed light on. Hip-hop shed the light on it. Mm -hmm. And so, personally, just as long as it's real and it's authentic, then I don't have a problem with it. The problem comes when, like, these corporations and, like, label executives, like, push that stuff to sell records mm-hmm. like like push it to sell records and then like push like a specific narrative to control people that's where the issue comes in mm-hmm. yeah and that's where i have a problem with it personally but yeah yeah i agree with i agree with josh um we've got i mean it's 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 definitely what the way the way is of this current time and so it's like all right well if he's popping with this kind of music i'm gonna make this kind of music and get signed and get a deal and he's gonna make it and get signed and get a deal and it's just like it's just the wave and so i think yeah you know because it's the current wave oh we lost Chandler. um oh no because it's the- i know he's like he's the owner of the group <laughs> <laughs> uh i hope we're still going uh, we're but, still live yeah <laughs> i think um I'll still talk like we are. Uh, But yeah, I think if, you know, if um, the wave is working, then who's going to stop the wave? Like there's you, I saw somebody speak on it in a clip. I think it was Remy Ma. She was talking about um, the, whoever the kid was that was like wasted or he was gone in an interview. Mm -hmm. And it's like, nobody was stepping over to be like, Hey, do you need some help? Like they were still asking him these questions and this gets like tons of views um, because that's what they want. Like they want views, but like these kids need help. Um, yeah. but it's gonna, it's because it sells. It's just like, you know, whatever. It's just like sex sells or, you know, if this is what sells then this is what makes money, we're not, they're not going to stop it. And it's the world. Like the world isn't necessarily looking for the all Same. in all answers. Like right. they're just looking to make that paper. So that bag. Mm hmm. Whew. Did you guys back. disappear too, or was it just no, me? We Did I just it's 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 just so we were good. Oh, dope! Yeah. <laughs> I was like, all of a sudden, it just like closed me out, and everything disappeared. <laughs> okay, what did I miss? Um, she just shared her thoughts on the subject. Ah, dope. Um. T- 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 um. Okay. So, last question. Uh, who had the dopest drop this week, music was? Um. We got new music from Paul Russell featuring John Keith and T. Ross the Giant. Single with Tadashi and Trip Lee, Roy Tosh, Beacon Light, Daraj. Um, K Drama, James Garden, Doc Million, Drew Bex, Evan and Eris, Uduhan, all kinds of people. Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah, yeah it was a lot of people. Yeah, there was a lot of music this week. Dang, it's the season. <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> you got to pick one of those singles. One? Just one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, well, James Garden's joint. Slap pretty hard for me. Mm-hmm. Very soulful. That's the mm. personal. Yeah. I didn't get to get an opportunity to listen to music because I was just like lost in the sauce. That's a yeah. true artist right there. That's so, good. so, <laughs> <laughs> so I can't really give an informative opinion. Uh, I got um, I got a few, a couple. I'm gonna answer with two, but then I'm gonna also to say. Like it is a good time to be in CHH because to hear that many releases on one week is really good. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. um, yeah. it used to be dry out here, <laughs> so that's oh, really yeah. dope to be able to hear that. But um, also like 
man, Beacon Light, his rollout was super dope. Um, I'm super proud of him. Mm-hmm. It was like a, a vote for Beacon, like vote for Pedro campaign. Really cool. Um, okay. Also, mm-hmm. too, my homie Daraj. Um, his yeah, campaign yeah. is really cool, too. So I see from a marketing standpoint, like, the, the cool stuff that's yeah. happening. So, it's good um, stuff. So, yeah, I'd say, like, for me, those two. Um, but also, too, like, everybody that you listed out, I see um, King Chav. I see DJ. King Chav, yeah. Mm-hmm. I see y'all. Like, they put out music, too. So, like, just whatever. Rich is watching. Everybody the channel <laughs> listed and go to new new music playlists. The flow, all those on Spotify, go check them out. So. King Shav said, King Shav. <laughs> yes, Shav? sir. I'm going to have to get that right. <laughs> Shout out to Chav. That's funny. King Chav. But yeah, yeah. Go check out uh, all that music. That's yeah, dope. One day, Josh, go get everybody's music. Like, yes. it's... <laughs> I'm I here for everybody. The, um, <laughs> I'm here so for everybody. I love the Tadashi and Triple one. Oh yeah, I mean I heard that like... one, so I'm biased because I worked it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that Trip Lee hops now though is just like just, is legendary. He's a, he's a gem, man. I'm just yeah. yeah. He's, he's like that guy that comes, comes back like every year. Yeah. He's crazy. He come, is he coming back again? You got the insider. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely <laughs> coming back. I mean, unashamed to what's happening, like in three weeks. That's true. You that's gotta have true. some sauce. Hey, that's true. Hey, Comes up so cool. quick. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But yeah, I heard some cool things coming with Unashamed Tour. So, that's what's up. Be on the lookout. It's a situation. Dope, dope, dope. Well, anything else you guys want to plug while you're here? Rich said you had some stuff. For sure. So, um, if you are an independent artist and you need help with your marketing or your branding. Um, feel free to reach out. I'll put my um, name in the comments after this is over. Um, but it's at Risha Leandra on everything. RishaLeandra.com. Like, I'm here for you. So hit me up. Um, I love this community and I love everything about it. Um, so I, mm. I definitely want to work with you guys. So that's my plug. Hey. Dope, dope, dope. Well, we appreciate you coming and joining, Risha. Hey, thank you for having me on these heavy topics. I need to go, yeah, yeah. Need you, to go pray. Can, next <laughs> next, <laughs> next week it'll be like work. um <laughs> next week it'll be like um all light topics. And then we'll have Mike L V and Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. oh man. <laughs> That's gonna be funny. So it'll be interesting. <laughs> That's funny. Awesome, awesome. Well, we appreciate everyone coming in and joining and chatting. Yes. And we'll see y'all next week. Peace. 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 Okay, now we're ending it.